Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Amy for anybody that is new around here and I have another tutorial for you today. I've got another watercolour tutorial today. Just quickly, if you are new around here then don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell as well so you'll be notified of all of my uploads. I upload art videos every single week. I do also have a list of all the materials that I'm using for this tutorial down below as well. So if you want to check anything out that is listed in the description but without further ado let's just jump right into this tutorial and I'm going to talk through all of my processes for how I got this very loose very expressive and colourful piece. I am using the Cotman watercolour set that is the set of 45 half pans. I'm also using Arches cold pressed watercolour paper that is £140 or 300 GSM squared and also I'm using the De La Rowney brush heads as well for the paint brushes but again I do have everything listed in the description down below. I'm just taping down the piece of art onto my table there using the magic scotch tape. You can also use washi tape as well, quite a lot of artists use washi tape. You want to make sure that it is taped down though just so that obviously when you apply a lot of watercolours and water you're not going to get that warping and bubbly effect, it's going to keep the paper nice and stretched out. So first of all let's talk through my first steps and what I do is I actually have two pots of water. I use one pot for the main sort of cleaning process of my brushes and then the second pot pretty much keeps my water quite clear and what I do is using a medium sized brush I first start to actually cover the whole paper just with clear water and the reason why I like to do this is because this is how I typically create my backgrounds I create a very loose background very loose effects and I rely on the watercolors bleeding and blending into the surrounding uh, paper and water so I make sure that my paper is nice and wet, you don't want to have it soaking wet. So if you're having it soaking wet where you're getting puddles on the paper that is not what you want to do because what is going to happen is number one the paper will warp but number two you're going to get a collection of colour, a collection of watercolours as well and you're going to get some horrible results and also you could risk damaging the tooth of the paper as well so you're more likely going to get tears if you have puddles of water. So whatever you do don't do that, make sure that you have just the right amount of water so you want to get the paper quite wet but not soaking wet and because the paper is quite wet what you're going to see is that as I start to go in and drop watercolour in the watercolour will blend and bleed out quite a lot because the water on the paper is quite wet. Remember that wherever there's water the watercolour will travel and if it's quite wet you're going to get more disperse of watercolour on the paper. Now watercolours are notorious for drying quite fast so it's not going to take a long time actually for the the surface of the water the paper to start drying and what you're going to notice as that paper starts to dry the watercolours won't bleed and blend as much so firstly initially you're going to get a lot of bleeding and then as it starts to dry like see where I'm creating those splatters there it's not really moving too much so if you're wanting to create a very very loose background where you want all the colours to be constantly bleeding and blending you're going to need to use quite a lot of water. You can also help the watercolours move a little bit more as well if you use things like a straw or like what I'm doing there, I'm dabbing the paper as well and I'm just moving it a little bit with the paintbrush. But you want to be careful because obviously if you use the straw too much you could get splatter effects everywhere, you could make a real mess. So I'm obviously just keeping that to a bare minimum, I'm being careful with where I dab the paper. I'm also using clear water for the dabbing process as well just to sort of blend it out a little bit more as well. And then to create the splatters of water what I like to do is I like to pick up some watercolour from the palette, make sure it's quite watered down and then I will tap on the end of the paintbrush and what that will do is the water droplets will then fall onto the paper and it will create that splattery effect. Now 
For the more vibrant colours, like you see there, the purple is quite vibrant as well as the yellow. Obviously, the paper is starting to dry a little bit more. And because the paper has dried, like I said, the watercolours won't move as much. And then you're going to get um, a more vibrant result. I also use different size paint brushes as well. Obviously the different size paint brushes you use, the different sort of shapes of splatters you're gonna get. Also the splatter uh, shapes and sizes will also depend on how far away from you are from the paper. If you're quite far away from the paper, you're gonna get quite small splatters, sorry, quite big splatters. If you're nearer the paper, you're gonna get quite small splatters. Um, Cause obviously with height and distance and things, you'll get different shapes and sizes of the paint splatters. And also with the different size paint brushes, if you're using really small and teeny tiny paint brushes, you're going to get really small paint splatters. If you're using larger ones, you'll get larger paint splatters as well. So what I do is I just keep going with throwing paint at the paper and creating those splatters and then when I'm happy with the result I wait for it to dry completely. So I've got some tips for drying. You can either wait for it to naturally dry, I'd say get some airflow into your workspace so open up a window and allow that air to sort of get to the paper that will dry it quicker and allow it to dry at sort of room temperature. You could be waiting for about four to six hours. Again, it really depends on how much water you've used. If you've used quite a lot of water, it could take even longer than that. And you wanna make sure that the paper is not only dry at the touch, but that it is dry all the way through the paper as well. And just to make sure that it is dry, you'll notice that the paper will sort of resort back to its normal standard shape. It won't be as warped and as bulged up as it is when it's wet. And another tip I have for drying, if you want to have a bit of a quicker process, is to use a fan. And you want to obviously have that fan on a cool setting and quite a slow setting as well. If you go in and blast your watercolour with a quite a harsh fan you're going to get that watercolor going everywhere so you want to keep it on quite a low setting a low speed you do not want to be going in with a hair dryer trust me i've made this mistake many times before um, i used to go in with a hair dryer and the heat will make the paper buckle so I was always getting problems with my paper warping and buckling and it would never return to the, the original shape it was and I couldn't understand why and then I realised from doing research that it was because of the heat from the hairdryer. Even on a cool setting I really would not recommend that you go in with a hairdryer on your watercolour piece. It's going to end up really distorting that paper. So if you want to have it being quite a quick drying process, just get a small fan or have it on a very, very low speed and um, you should find it will dry within about an hour. So I actually use two little mini desk fans. I have one at the side of the paper and one then sort of at the front of the paper and my watercolour piece will be dry within about an hour, probably even less than that. So for the actual painting process of the bird, now let's talk a little bit about that. So I like to go for a very, very loose effect. I tend to use a small paintbrush. That is just my personal preference. I find that with a small paintbrush, you can get more precise details for one, but also I find that I'm a lot more careful with where I'm applying the watercolors. If I go in with quite a large paintbrush, I can often find that I'm making mistakes and things. So I like just personally to use a very small precise paintbrush this is actually nothing special this is literally a really cheap paintbrush and it's not even branded I mean I've had this since I was a child so um, I don't actually have a lot of like really expensive paintbrushes I use quite a lot of cheaper alternatives and I still get a lovely result so if anybody says to you you have to have this paintbrush and it's made out of gold Honestly, that is not the case at all. You can get really lovely results with even cheap paintbrushes. 
So what I do is I use this small paintbrush and I always work in layers. So layers are very, very important with watercolors. I used to be terrible at watercolors because I was so impatient. I would never wait for my layers to dry. I'd end up with all sorts of horrible effects. And now that I've obviously started working with watercolors more and more, I've got a lot more used to them. I know what I'm doing with them now and I'm a lot more patient with them. And layers are really, really important. If you're not waiting for your layers to dry, you're gonna get all sorts of different effects. You'll get like cauliflower effect, which is like bleeding colors and things like that. And also you can get puddles on the paper forming. So waiting for layers to dry is really important. And a way that helps me with this process is that you'll see me working on different stages of the bird at different times. So I'll start with the face and then and as I've let that sort of initial layer of the face dry, I'll work on a different part of the bird. And then I'll just go back to the face, add more colours, move on to a different part of the bird, work on that part of the bird. And it's a gradual process of building up all of these tones and colours and layers over time. So although it might look like the process is very, very quick, I worked on the actual bird itself for over an hour and that's not including like waiting for layers to dry as well so there was a bit of extra time waiting for layers to dry as well. So that is another thing with watercolours that a lot of people don't realise. Obviously, if you're watching a sped up version of a watercolour tutorial or even a time lapse video of somebody doing watercolours, what you're not seeing is you're not seeing that drying process because that person has not filmed that process, that person's cut that process out. So you might be thinking that they are working continuously on this watercolour piece when actually guaranteed they have spent hours on that piece and they have actually been recording in between layers. So it's really important to make sure that you are creating layers and you're working on different stages of a piece at a time. So now we're moving on to the branch and what I want to do is I want to actually just demonstrate a little bit about what I'm saying with like the layers. So see how I'm working on different stages of that branch. So right now I'm working on the main branch itself but a minute ago I was also working on the sort of twig sticking out from the branch and then you'll see me going and working on different areas of the branch and that is just to make sure that I'm just gradually working on the different areas of the branch at different times so that we don't start then getting you know horrible effects that we don't want on the paper and what you also see me doing is I'll also work from the light to dark values as well um, with watercolors if you start by going in too dark it's really hard to add in lighter tones over the darker tones so I always make sure that I start off light and then I build up my darkest values and if there's anywhere that I really really want to preserve I will make sure that I don't actually apply watercolors to those areas because once you've applied the watercolors it's really really hard to then lift the color back up or get back to its you know normal color that was there before and what you can see me doing at the moment is I'm starting to just go in and intensify any values any hues and colors in the bird as well
Then what I do is once I'm happy with all of my colours, all of my layers, I then wait for that bird to completely dry. Again, I use my two fans and I have it on my low slow setting and I will just wait again until that's dried completely and then what I like to do as a last step is I like to go in with white gouache paint and the one that I'm using is the white gouache paint from Windsor and Newton it is listed in the description below as well and it's gouache is in between watercolors and acrylic so it's thicker than watercolors but it's thinner than acrylic and it's very very fast drying as well like watercolors what you want to do is with the white gouache you want to create a milky texture and to get that milky texture you just mix in a bit of water into the white paint and i love white gouache for highlights so what you'll see me doing is I'll go around the bird and also the branch as well and any areas that I want to just define a little bit more or create a highlight for I will go in with the white gouache. Again I'm using that really cheap precise paintbrush and I'm just going in and very messily just applying this wherever I really want to give it a highlight and it just also adds to that loose and expressive effect as well. I also like to incorporate some other colours as well so I'll go in with the white gouache and then I will also add in some darker colours or other more vibrant tones as well just to re-add in some more tones, some more hues and some more values. And what you'll see is that I'm quite precise with where I put the white gouache, I'm quite messy with it as well just to create that very expressionist feel. And I also create a lot of white paint splatters as well in the background. That is just like my little signature for what I do for all of my watercolour pieces. I love just adding in those splatters into the background and giving it that final expressionist feel. And what I also do is I also like to just go in with a sort of dark brown or a black and I also like to just add in some darker values as well again just to add a little bit more contrast to the piece and we are actually pretty much finished for this tutorial so I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial about how I get this very nice expressionist feel and very colourful feel to my watercolour pieces. I hope that you picked up lots of helpful tips and as always if you are new around here then don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the bell as well because when you hit the bell you'll get notified of all of my future uploads and I am always uploading every single week so you won't want to miss out on all of my videos. But anyway guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this one. As always, I will be back very soon with another video. And again, thank you so much for watching. Bye guys!